Hey everybody, good morning. Today we've got a Freightliner Cascadia DD13. And we have a bad ejector. We're getting a fault code for that. For that, it's giving us a needle amplification number five. I'll show you what that code is in a second. So I wanna give you a quick overview. The valve cover's been removed and this is what sits on top, which is gonna be your injector harness. Okay, all this that goes around the, the perimeter is your harness. And the number five, again, you can count the tubes, one, two, three, four, five. You're gonna remove the injector two, and then you're gonna pull out the injector. But before we do that, we need to remove the harness. As you can see, again, it's a pretty big harness that goes all the way around the rocker housing. So we're gonna get started on that. I'm gonna show you once we remove the injector harness, we're gonna get started on the actual injector itself. Okay guys, so here is a little overview of the injector harness while it's still installed. You're gonna see a few things you're gonna need to remove before you take the entire thing out. Obviously the Jake brake has two electrical connections. Each injector is gonna have four, okay? Four little connections that you're gonna need to remove in order to remove the actual harness, okay? On top of that, it's also secured by these little bolts, okay? So I believe there's gonna be <sighs> looks about eight of them and then you can actually remove the harness complete because again this is like a little skeleton that goes all the way around all right so just to give you that quick little overview and again we've already removed all of these as you can see that's how you know they've been removed properly now be careful because as the harness gets older it tends to dry up and those tend to break so be very careful when you remove them if they break i highly recommend that you replace the harness okay this particular case, the customer removed it and replaced it about a year ago when they had some other work done somewhere else. But uh, anyway, just to give you guys a quick little overview and a heads up on what we're doing. And so once I get this out, I will show you how to remove the injector fuel line supply and then the actual injector. Pretty much itself. ready to get the injector out. Just want to show you a quick overview of the tools that we're going to be using to remove the actual fuel line and the injector itself. You're going to need your 10 millimeter socket, 19 millimeter, and this little thing that snap-on cells you could probably find something else online and that's just really to get around there you go okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get this removed the top line actually this came out already fairly easy the bottom one's gonna be a little fun just because of the angle but I think we'll we'll still be okay so I'm gonna get that removed and uh, let's see what let's see how we we have get the injector going. line loose we are gonna go ahead and remove that very easy very simple so once this is loose, you are gonna get some fuel that's gonna leak, nothing major. But anyway, here is your actual fuel line. There we go. Now those I always like to replace. Okay, so keep in mind, replace those. I'll show you the new part number right now in a second. Let so me show you. The injector. Injector's been, I'm sorry, the injector fuel line has been removed, as you can see here. Now this is the seal. I reckon the new injector's gonna come with the bolt, okay? The hold down bolt, and then the seal. Replace the seal. 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter. And if you look up and over. Okay, so now that we have the seal removed, I just wanted to show you what it looks like without the seal. As you can see there, there's the cam housing. Here's the seal. Now again, the new injector comes with the seal, so always replace the seal, because this will tend to leak over time. So again, just replace it. Right now we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the injector. I'm gonna come up here and give you a little overview. And there's our injector right back in there is the 10 millimeter bolt, bolt, excuse me, the hold down clamp, and then the actual injector. So I'm gonna try and get you the best view possible as far as removing the injector. It's a little hard to do while we're holding the actual phone camera and get this all done. But I'm gonna go ahead and pop this out right now and show you what it all looks right, like. All right guys, so now that we have the injector bolt removed, as you can see right back there, we need to get the injector out. Now to do so, again, you're gonna need something like that, okay? Be careful where you place this under. Okay, typically you're gonna to wanna to kind of wedge it underneath there and try and pry that injector up. Okay, I'm just gonna kind of show you briefly, but I'm gonna have to do it a little differently. So again, that's how you remove the injector and I will show you the rest. So the set. injector has now been removed. This is our old injector. Truck has about uh, 700,000 miles on it. At this point, it's up to the customer. It's up to you really if you wanna replace all six, it's expensive, or you can replace just the one and go by there, you know, go one by one. This is the new injector. This is the part number you're gonna get based on your VIN. 
All right, inside, let me show you what you get for the wonderful price of about $600, okay? Here's our injector, nicely wrapped, very pretty. Here's the injector itself, okay? So you can see it comes with the seals and it's ready, literally ready to install, okay? You're gonna get the injector seal that goes on the outside of the housing, a new bolt, always use the new bolt, throw the old one away, okay? There is an injector code. Let me see if I can get that in the, uh, get this in this picture here. One second, guys. 